Uh, I'd like to start with, uh, I've got three little jokes I want you to look at. Here's the first one. Actually, you had a pretty great life, but you were looking down at your phone and you missed it. <laughs> yeah. I like this one. Noah, keep an eye out for my mother. She's coming with us. <laughs> and uh, I, this is one of my favorites. Big storms are brewing. Then I'm glad we didn't go on that cruise thing with your whack job friend, Noah. <laughs> If you like those, I have three more tomorrow, so. <laughs> well, Merry Christmas, and I want to welcome you to our first uh, PJs and pancakes. Two days from today is Christmas, and I wanted to share with you quickly, how can you experience your own Christmas breakthroughs, which we've been talking about through um, 2018, and we're going to look through the eyes of the shepherd. And before we do that, I, have, I went to a new movie yesterday, uh, Aquaman. Anybody yeah. heard of him? Yeah, yeah I, I like that story. So, anyway, I went to, I went to the movie and uh, I went to go sit in my seat, D15, <laughs> and there was a woman already seated there with a family of four. So I looked at her and she said, "Is is this your seat?" And I said, "Well, I I thought it was." <laughs> And she showed me her phone, and it said D15. I didn't look at the particulars. And I said, well, listen, I would never want to disrupt your family. So I'll just go out and ask them, because it was full now. So I'll see if they can figure out a seat for me. So I took my ticket up, and they say, uh, yours is legitimate, but hers is not. And I go, well, I don't, I don't know what that means, but can you just find me maybe another one? She said, no, that, she's not supposed to be in that seat. So they went, and they moved them. And I felt really bad. And afterwards, I saw her, and she comes up, and she's, you know, touching me arms and hugging me. I don't know this woman from anybody. And she said, I'm just so sorry for the inconvenience. I said, no, 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 it's perfectly fine. And then she looks at me, and she changes immediately. Tear starts coming to her eyes. She says, my life is falling apart. So I said, what, what's happening? My brother who's with us, he's getting divorced. We're having family crisis, and she just listed a, a litany of things. And so I said to her, well, that's interesting. I said, it sounds like in the season where there should be light, you've got some dark days going on. And she's going, I really do. And I said, well, that's interesting, because uh, on Christmas Eve, I'm a pastor, and I'm going to be speaking on light through your dark days. I think there might be some hope there for you. And she goes, you know what? That's really interesting. And I said, well, tomorrow it's PJs and pancakes. We've never done this before. And I'm going to talk about discovering joy. So uh, I thought, man, I wish I had a business card on me. And when I looked through my billfold, I had one. This little tattered. But I had to walk about a block to find these people. But I got to her husband. I thought, I don't want to go to her because she'll think I'm stalking her. And I, I didn't <laughs> want that. So I go up and I hand him the card. And I said, uh, listen. Just wanted you guys to know, 9.30, 11.30 tomorrow, 2.30, 30, 30. And I thought it just, you know, might be helpful for you. And what that dry, drove home for me is in a season where it's supposed to be, the expectations are joyful and happy and uh, hope-filled and uh, satisfaction and fulfillment. Many people are not experiencing it. Maybe that's some of us today. You'd say, you know, joy seems to be fleeting. So for just a few moments, I want to talk to you about how do you discover joy? How can you make joy yours on a daily basis? The research is in people who are more joy-filled, people who have a more optimistic, positive outlook in life. They thrive much better spiritually, emotionally, relationally, financially, vocationally, intellectually, and physically than people who struggle with depression, struggle with neg negativity, struggle with all the different kinds of negative emotions that we can. So I want to share with you, out of the Christmas story, how do you make joy yours on a daily basis? And it's your responsibility. So how do you do that? If you're a guest with us, we have notes in the bulletin. I'd encourage you to take notes. It might be something that can be helpful for you. Here's the first point of the day. You need to expect 
joy. In order to experience joy, you must expect it. In other words, you must initiate the decision that your life is going to be joy-filled instead of disappointment-filled or distress-filled or despair-filled or disillusionment-filled. You must set the expectation. Because of Christmas, you know that God knows who you are and he knows where you are, and he knows what you need at any moment. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 27 says this, Honor and majesty surround him. Strength and joy fill his dwelling. One of the characteristic traits of the very presence of God and the character of God is joy. Psalm says this, it's a uh, messianic, prophetic verse, says this, in your presence there is fullness of joy. As you choose to be conscious of God's presence and he's with you every second of every day, there can be this deep sense of satisfaction that fills your life. So under expect joy, there's two things there. Number one, letter A. Realize that joy can be found right where you are. This is a very positive reality. As I set my expectation for a joy-filled life, I don't have to go somewhere to experience it. I don't have to have new friends. I don't have to get out of the marriage I'm in and get into another one so that I can have joy. I don't have to quit my job. Joy isn't somewhere else. It's right here. You get to have the same kind of experience that the shepherds had. Would you follow along as I read Luke 2, 8 to 9? That night there were shepherds staying in the field nearby and they were guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them and they were terrified. The angel said to the shepherd, joy to the world because the Savior today has been born. The ultimate gift, loved ones, that God could ever give is to come himself as a human being that first Christmas morning. God became like one of us so that we could become more like him. When you understand this, <coughs> this truly changes your life. How can Jesus bring us joy? Why is it that God made us for joy? Because it was Jesus who came to free you and I from our own sin. The Bible says this, he was despised and rejected. He was a man of sorrows who was acquainted with the deepest grief. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, he took our weaknesses, he took our diseases, he took our sicknesses, he took our sorrows, those nails, the crown of thorns, the spear in the sight, that was all the price that he paid for our rebellion. The prophet says he was crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that you and I could be made whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. It was Jesus presenting himself as our sin offering. The Bible says he was the Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world on himself so that you and I could be in right standing with him. The result of the ultimate involvement of Jesus Christ for us means we were created for, designed for joy. So we realize that joy can be found wherever you are. You don't have to change your circumstance to begin to experience joy. And know that joy comes from God's involvement in your life. The last point I want to look at today is you expect joy. Number two is you have to be willing to choose it. Joy is a choice. Were you aware of that? If you're sad, it's because you've chosen it. If you're depressed, it's because you've chosen it. If you're angry, ultimately, you've chosen it. If not, 
then you would be condemned to victimhood. But God says you're not. I've created you with a free will. And you can choose joy. There's three choices in this text about the shepherds, how they model for us. Look at the letter A. Go see. If you're going to choose joy, you've got to get to where Jesus is. You've got to get to where he's acting and, and, and be behaving. You've got to get with the people that you see that Jesus has made a difference in his life. You've got to get into his presence and see him. The first choice is that you're willing to go see Jesus and actually have a personal relationship with him. If you've attended here for any length of time, you hear me say this again and again. The difference between religion and Christianity is Christianity is God in Jesus Christ offering you and I a relationship. Not rituals, not regulations, not rules. He wants to have a face-to-face -face personal relationship with you. And maybe you're here today because you've seen the change in your husband or in your spouse or in your father or in your mother or in your wife or in your son or in your daughter or in a friend. I commend you for being with us today. You are coming and you are seeing. You need to do what the shepherds did. You need to check out who Jesus Christ is. Bethlehem really happened. It's not just a story that somebody made up. Jesus has changed countless billions of people's lives throughout history. The shepherds and the wise men, this is very interesting. They are a historically attested fact. The Encyclopedia Britannica says that the birth of Jesus is the most historically attested fact in all of human history. You still have people who are saying the Bible's a myth, Jesus was never born. It's just not true. It is factually and historically not true. If you're a guest with us today, we have a, a gift for you. And if you're, you've been with us for a while and you haven't purchased these books, I highly recommend them. There's two books by Lee Strobel. One's called The Case for Christ, and the other one is called The Case for Faith. Excellent books that deal with the rationality and the logic of faith, and it attempts to answer some of the most basic questions that people who have not come to Christ yet, they struggle with these questions. It's wonderful. If you've not seen the movie The Case for Faith, which is uh, a biography and it's a true story based on Lee Strobel's life, I just highly recommend it to you. If you're a Christian and you're saying, I want this kind of joy to be my experience every second of every day, then you and I must do what the shepherds did. What did they do? Luke 2, 15 and 16. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go to Bethlehem. And then notice what it says. Let's see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried to the village. They found Mary and Joseph, and there was a baby lying in the manger. Shepherds are really good examples of, of what I first talked about. Is you've got to expect joy. And therefore, you have to be willing to choose it. You have to be willing to take actions that will help create that lifestyle of joy. So many have asked, you, asked me about it at my age, how do you stay so passionate? How do you stay engaged? I choose joy. Amen. I was clinically depressed probably for the first 25 to 30 years of my life. I know that stick like I know the back of my hand. I don't want that. I've been there. I choose joy. And I know how to choose it. And I know what to do with it. Does that mean you're happy all the time? No. No. I get frustrated. I can get angry over all kinds of things. But in the midst of it, I know how to choose joy. So you have to expect joy. You have to be willing to choose it. 
You have to be around where Jesus is. Letter B. Go see, go tell. After you go and see that Jesus is he who says he is, you begin to see that you actually have access to joy. Then you go and you tell. Now, in Southern California, it is kind of interesting. Uh, obviously, people who are good in sales, they want to go tell because they want to sell their product. But I've experienced a lot of people where good things have happened to them, and they just keep it to themselves. They don't share it. And, you know, loved ones, I, I came from a fairly dysfunctional family. One thing my mom and dad taught me is, Scott, you share what you have. You share your joy. You, you share the successes that you've had. You share your time, your talents, your treasures. You do that. God has given it to you. You don't hoard them. You give them away. In Luke 2, 17 and 18, it says this. After seeing, the shepherds told everyone what had happened. Now, I don't know if you know this, but in the Jewish culture, shepherds were at the lowest rung. They were not admired. They were not respected, and they were not valued. But what they saw so impacted them, they just said, we can't keep this to ourselves. And the angel had said to them about the child, all who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. Loved ones, go and tell. This is an important principle of, of, of joy. You don't bottle it. You know, I could have said to that woman yesterday, well, you know, uh, my life's just falling apart. I could have looked at her and said, sucks to be you. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm not built that way. If you're struggling and you're willing to listen, I believe I can help you. I want to. I didn't soon walk away and go, boy, too bad for her. She's going to have a bad Christmas. No. We're to go see, we're to go tell. We're to inject joy wherever we can. And then look at letter C. You go see, you go tell, you go rejoice. One of the leaving evidences of the joy of Jesus in your life is that you live a life of gratitude. You live a life of rejoicing. You live a life of thankfulness for what Jesus has and is doing in your life. In Luke 2.20, would you read this out loud with me? Let's begin. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. The shepherds went back to their sphere of influence, and they found joy there. This is what God wants for you and me this season. He wants you to take joy not only home for, with you, but wherever you go. Listen, this Christmas season, my prayer for you is that you will expect joy and that you will choose joy because you're most likely you're going to be with people that the joy has leaked out of their life. And God will specifically put you there so that you can help infuse joy influence people, impact them. Here's the truth. You're going to impact everyone you come in contact with one way or the other. You'll either add to their confusion, you will add to their problems, you will add to the misery of their life, or you can be a life changer where you can inject joy into their life. And maybe they will choose and expect joy after influencing you. Are being influenced by you. Does that make sense? We, you've heard me say this. It's very simple. Two kinds of people. You're either a taker or you're a giver. And if you're going, I wonder which one I am. At 10, time, at 10 interactions in a day, how many times have you given? How many times have you taken? If you've taken four to five times out of those 10 times, you're a taker. How do you become a giver? Same way as you, be, you, you receive joy. You expect to give. 
you look to give. Some of the most joy-filled people here at CV Church are people that when they're out and about, they're always looking to give. They give of their time. They give of their talents. They give of their treasure. They give of their touch. So I want to challenge you this morning or this afternoon. I want you to expect joy. Oh, but you don't know my family. <laughs> Scott, I lost a husband. I lost a wife. I lost a child. I lost a job. I, div- I was divorced around Christmas time. What they're really saying is, my Christmas are going to be terrible for the rest of my life. Ah, uh, I want to say, really? Why would you choose that? Why would you choose that? Expect joy. Realize that joy can be found wherever you are, whatever your circumstances are. Know that joy comes from God's involvement in your life, and then you must be willing to go see, go tell, and go rejoice. I want to encourage you to invite as many people to come along with you as you can tomorrow. I'm going to speak on this. This is a subject that's very dear to my heart. Light for your dark places. Where are you experiencing disappointment? Where are you experiencing distress? Where are you experiencing depression? Jesus, who is the light of the world, has come to infuse your life with light. All you have to do is accept it and accept him. Let's pray. Father, we're really grateful for this Christmas season. Uh, I'm especially grateful for my family, for this CV family, for uh, our guests, our friends, for our community. Lord, I'm grateful that we get a chance to discover joy every day. So I pray for my friends this afternoon. If there's anyone here that they're expecting anything less than joy, I ask that you would help them to make that adjustment today. This isn't just their life. This isn't how life has to be. You came, Jesus Christ, and you changed everything. So we expect joy today, and we choose joy. I pray that their Christmas season and experience, starting now, will be filled with joy and be filled with hope and be filled with expectation. Even when bad news come, even when difficulties come, even when expectations are not met and disappointments happen on a regular basis, they would choose the joy of Jesus. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.